Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you with the law for and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, and forgive us, so that we may be glad with you. of Almighty God. Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray. God, our Savior, nothing is impossible for you. Prepare our hearts to rejoice in your glorious advent. And with this candle that we light, let us remember the gift you have given. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Christ and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> First reading comes from 2 Samuel. Now when David was a king and was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies round about him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now. I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. 
But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any tribal leaders of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from a pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince, over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for, sure, for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall not afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 19 through 26. Your love, O oh Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. My hand will hold him fast and my arm <laughs> will make him strong. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. The second reading comes from Romans. I'm going to say this before I read it. It's, it's kind of hard to uh, comprehend, I think. Now, according to God, who is able to strengthen you, 
according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed. And though the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. comes to us today from Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of the, his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the whole Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child, will be born, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here, are, here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I invite our children forward for the children's sermon. Okay, I'm going to have you come back here again. I'm getting there, but boy, I'm not there yet. Good morning. Ooh, ooh you got some nice stickers. Good morning. 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 I am so glad to see you all this morning. And um, so I just read a gospel reading about an angel. Right? Did you hear that? Angel's name was Gabriel. I know you didn't catch that, did you? But Gabriel told Mary something special. What was it? You're going to have a baby, Mary. Hey, Mary, you're going to have a baby. It's going to be a special baby. And you know what? Mary said, what? Really? I'm going to have a baby? Cool. Well, not in those words. 
But you know what? The angel also said, your cousin Elizabeth is going to have a baby too. And she's a little bit old to be having a baby, but her baby is special too. Now, what I didn't read to you was that Mary then goes to visit Elizabeth. She goes to see Elizabeth. And you know what happens? Mary walks in the door and says, hi, cousin Elizabeth. And you've, you've seen mamas that are pregnant, right? Yeah, they got this belly hanging out, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, it looks like a watermelon, but it's really a baby on the inside, right? And you know what happens to Elizabeth? That baby jumps, leaps in her belly. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine that? That baby, she could feel that baby just do this big old leap. Because that baby, that baby knew what was going on for Mary. You know who that baby was? John the Baptist. We've been reading, we've been hearing about John the Baptist here for a few weeks, right? John the Baptist is going to say, say um, I'm preparing the way for Jesus, I'm preparing the way for the Lord. But right now, this week, we're hearing that John the Baptist is in his mama's womb, in his mama's belly, and leaps for joy because he knows that Mary just walked in with baby Jesus in her belly. Isn't that a hoot? Have you ever been really excited about something? No? Yeah? Ever been really excited about anything, Grant? Yes. Yes. Alice, you ever been any, really excited about anything? Christmas. Oh, yeah. So let's just say that tomorrow morning you get out of bed and you go down, you go to the Christmas tree and you see <clears throat> the presents and you see one that is the exact thing you wanted. What are you going to do? A scream. Oh, ooh, what else? What else? Clap your hands. What are you going to do? Be excited, and you're gonna do what, Abby? Run around. Run around. Yes. And shocked and happy. Yes. Um, will any of you jump up and down? Yeah, I know. Okay, so I'd like to see you leap for joy. Yes. <laughs> ah, Woohoo! Yes. Nice. Okay, you can slow it down. All right. So, so that's what happens. That's what happens when we're so excited about something, right? And that's what John the Baptist was doing in his mama's belly, leaping for joy because Jesus the Savior was near. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. I hope you get to leap for joy tomorrow. Partly because of the presents, partly because of all the wonderful fun tomorrow, but also because we remember that Jesus is born. And that's pretty special too, right? Yes? Absolutely. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for coming to the world, for to the world making John the Baptist Leap for joy. Leap for joy. Let us leap for joy. Let us leap for joy. Also. also. Amen. Amen. Boy, I hope there's enough in there. I kind of forgot to check. Thanks for coming up. Have a good week. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and awesome. 
Thank you for this day and thank you for bringing us here to this house of worship that we may once again celebrate the coming at the advent, the, the anticipation of you, Jesus, God made flesh dwelling on earth among us. Thank you for being our hope and our joy. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. <coughs> so we've heard this story of Mary and Gabriel and Elizabeth and John the Baptist. We've heard it so many times that we almost know it by heart, right? When, when I was reading the gospel, did you hear a song version of the Magnificat in your head? I did. We know this story so well. And this morning we listened to this story again. But maybe we can hear it with new ears this time. Because we've kind of gotten to know each other in the last couple of years. We've got a past now. We've got a foundation. We've got a shared history together. And there's more. In the past year, we've traced another past, another history. We've traced, we've traced Zion's history here. We've traced 500 years of being Lutheran. We've traced these things. And, of course, in the Old Testament, we trace history also, right? We, we trace the history of God being active in our world. We trace the history of God active with us humans. That's a lot of what we've been tracing with our history, right? And so God keeps choosing a person to bless so that they can be a blessing. And all through the Old Testament, God keeps choosing a person to bless so that they can be a blessing. Think about it. Abraham and Sarah, Joseph and Moses and Hannah and King David and King Solomon, Elijah and the widow, Jonah, Daniel. At just the right time, God blessed each of these blessed them so they would be a blessing. None of these people were likely <laughs> candidates, but God chose them. And now, and now we read of another, another that God has chosen. Mary. Mary, a young woman from the middle of nowhere, her family wasn't important in history. They didn't have wealth. They didn't have power. Mary wasn't particularly important or remarkable. Just another young woman about to be married. And Joseph wasn't anyone remarkable either. Except if he was to go back 500 years he could claim King David as his ancestor. Neither Mary nor Joseph were likely candidates, but God chose them. God chose Mary to bring the promise of an everlasting king in the line of King David. God promised this long ago. God promised David and all of David's people that this day would come, that the line of David would rule forever. And there were a few people who still believed that this promise was going to come true, even after 500 years of heartbreak and suffering. They held out hope for the promised Messiah, the promised King. That was a huge promise that God made to these people. 
And this huge promise that God made, the people have been waiting for it. And God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises now and always. And now, at just the right time, God has chosen another unlikely candidate who will be blessed to be a blessing. God chose Mary. And young, ordinary Mary sings. My soul proclaims the greatness of God, and my spirit rejoices. She sings about how she has been blessed, and she sings about how God is blessing everyone through her. Young, ordinary Mary realizes that she has been blessed to be a blessing to all people. And I am in awe. I am in awe that God made such a huge promise and chose to fulfill that promise through such an unlikely young woman. God could have chosen some noteworthy, powerful woman, but God chose Mary, and now Mary is noteworthy. God could have chosen a huge event to bring in the kingdom of God, but God chose to bring the kingdom by a tiny baby. So today, we see and we hear again. We see and hear more clearly that God turns things upside down. God does unexpected things, and God chooses unlikely candidates to bless so that they will be a blessing to all. That's how God works in our world. That's how God works with us humans. That's God's kingdom. That's the promise fulfilled. For Mary and Joseph, for you, for me, for all people. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Please stand as we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Guided by the light of Christ, let us pray for the coming dawn of joy, healing, and comfort for all people. Your eternal reign has come into the world. Give us ears to hear your call to serve your kingdom and send us out to those who are hurting and in need of good news. Lord, in your mercy. You created the mystery and beauty of the earth. Replenish rivers, lakes, seas, and all bodies of water so that plants, animals, and humans can have life and be refreshed. Lord, in your mercy. You bring down the powerful and raise up the lowly. Where war rages, shatter hatred with forgiveness and peace. Where fear rules, make your all-powerful and eternal presence known. Lord, in your mercy. You remember us with mercy, Lord, as you have done for all generations. Fill us, comfort us, strengthen us, and enlighten us. Make your will known to all in need. Today, we pray especially for those we've named on our prayer list, for Clarence Scarberry, and for Pat Elsass, and for those we now name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. You called Mary to bear your son. We pray for pregnant women, for mothers and fathers of infants and small children, and especially for couples who bear the pain of infertility, miscarriage, or stillbirth. Lord, in your mercy. Your kingdom has no end. With your servants throughout time, women and men, old and young, unite us forever in your reign of peace and joy. Lord, in your mercy. We raise our prayers to you, O God, in the name of the one who is, who was, and who is to come, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
understand. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.